Welcome, everyone. I'm excited to have the opportunity to talk to Bernadette Jiwa from Perth, Australia tonight. Welcome, Bernadette. Hi, Well, thanks for having me. You're welcome. I want to tell everyone about you, and I'm thrilled to have you. Bernadette is the author of three number one Amazon bestsellers on marketing. Her first book, Make Your Idea Matter, The Fortune Cookie Principle, and her latest book, Difference, the one-page method for reimagining your business and reinventing your marketing. And Bernadette is a brand, story, and marketing strategist working with entrepreneurs and business leaders around the world, helping them to apply difference thinking to their businesses so they can intentionally craft and tell brand stories that communicate their difference. Bernadette's blog, thestoryoftelling.com, was voted the best Australian business blog in 2012, and she spoke about the secret to spreading ideas at TEDx Perth. She's been named one of the top 100 branding experts to follow on Twitter and has been described as, and I totally agree with this one, the female Seth Godin and the Banksy of the marketing world. Bernadette's website, and we'll repeat this at the end, is thestoryoftelling.com. I'm so thrilled to have Bernadette. I was telling you, Bernadette, beforehand, I read every single blog that you write. And in today's mass email, it's I have to pick and choose who I am following and who is ahead of me and really understands marketing and where it's going. And I've, I really look at you as almost like a futurist. I also follow Seth as well. And I do like the way you write. And I love the name. The story of telling is just incredible. Thrilled to have you and why you created that. Okay, so we have been stuck in a time warp for about 50 or 60 years. If you go back, if you think about Mad Men and that era where you know advertising reigned, we've been stuck in a time warp with this marketing model that was designed to sell things to our grandparents, essentially. So the idea was you have a product or a service and you decide what you can sell it for and then you decide where you're going to sell it and then you promote the heck out of it. So that was the four Ps, product, price, place, promotion. That's why I created this map. And it's it's really got six new Ps. So you start with principles. You start with the truth about something. So Warby Parker started with the truth of, you know, the, their truth was why do glasses cost as much as an iPhone? And there was also a lot of truth around them and the marketplace. And yeah, let me just pull up. I know. Up. I was going to yeah, ask you to show yeah. it. It's fabulous. Yeah. Okay. So at the top of the map, it starts with principles and, and people can, all, anybody can download this for free on difference.is is the website. Okay. So the principles are the truth about you, the truth about the market or the industry you want to uh, serve people in, and then the truth about the people you want to serve. And, you know, that sounds like a tiny little thing to discuss or to think about, but often we, we come up with an idea for something we want to launch or you know, we want to open this store, but we actually haven't deconstructed the reasons behind why we're going to do that, why we're the person to do it, and how we're going to succeed. So it's a good place to start. Can you give us an example? You no, know, I love Warby Parker glasses. They are one of the best examples. I, I like to say, you know, they're my poster child, really, <laughs> the difference map, because they're an incredible business. And the truth is, when they did some digging, that they found that there was an oligopoly in this in this eyeglass market, prescription eyewear, so that there was one big company, one giant company that owned the whole marketplace. And therefore, there was no competition there. And they understood, Neil Blumenthal had worked with a charity, um, a non-profit, to bring sight to people in, the, in developing countries. So he knew that people everywhere, no matter whether they were rich or poor, wanted to look good you know they weren't going to as he said I think he calls nobody wants to wear a pair of 70s cat's eyes they'd rather be blind <laughs> and um, so that was one of the big truths that there was this big oligopoly and then they just started digging from there and they came up with the idea which most people thought was crazy which is to sell eyeglasses online you know and the truth about the marketplace was it you know no competition the truth about them is they were 
um, they had a lot of experience. They in in well, Neil had that experience in the actual uh, field, and they were you know business people. They weren't really techie, but they you know they knew that they needed to bring people on board. They're very values based guys. And the truth about the people that they wanted to serve was we were really fed up with having to pay all this money for glasses that we went every two years and had our glasses, I had it, you know, to buy new glasses when our prescription ran out or needed renewing. So mm -hmm. they, that whole model has been shifted. You know, people are buying pairs of pairs like oh. they're not just buying one pair every two years yeah they've got mm -hmm. this model also where they they the, actually the crucial point two other things 95 dollars per pair yeah for really stylish glasses and the other thing is they've got this one for one model so if you buy a pair they give a pair to somebody in the developing world oh i didn't know that that's a great example can you speak about the notion with this uh difference map about launch it so the thing about this you know i've got this idea and i launched there's this we, there's this huge focus on launch day i just need to get it out there or you know we there's all this angst around launch day and a lot of the time we don't think beyond launch day yeah and we don't the thing about the difference map and the ideas in the book is it pulls you back always to the customer and to the reason why you're launching this thing and and why it will succeed you know Without the customer, there's no point launching. It's not just good enough to say, well, I'm going to open the door and, and then they'll come. I mean, my latest blog post today um, is talking about customer service. I mean, 70% of our customers don't come back because of poor customer service. And $83 billion is lost every year just in the U.S. alone through poor customer service. So It's amazing. Launching is not just about, okay, I'm done, you know, the idea is out there. It's about why does this thing need to exist and even exist in the world? Why am I the person to do it? How am I going to create difference for the people that I want to serve? All of those things are wrapped up in it. You talked about making your brand story create an emotional connection with your customer the experience and also the importance of telling a story. One of the things I, I just want to clarify for people is that we think that story is just, you know, anecdotes or things about us that we t tell people on, in, on our blogs or our websites or with our copy on our about page. And actually your story is much more than that. In my second book, it's all about the 20 keys to a brand story. Mm -hmm. So, the, it's the fortune cookie principle and the whole premise of that book is that people don't buy what you do they buy how it makes them feel mm -hmm. and the story and that that the whole story piece which is not just the words it's sometimes it, it you know the copy and words are part of it like things like design for example apple with the dis leading with design mm -hmm. That's part of their story, um, how they name things, their customer service at the Genius Bar, that's part of the story. And part of the story isn't even told by you. It's what your customers are saying about you mm -hmm. or the reputation you've got, the reaction you create in the market when you launch things or when you, you know, when you exist. So I think it's really important to not just focus on, well, what do I say about uh, myself? I think the story is also... What are we giving people to talk about here? That's you know what that's story? Fabulous. Yeah, what story are we giving? What story are we giving our customers to tell? So, mm -hmm. you know, Virgin is a great example. You know, their lounges and you know are all amazing. Uber is another oh, really yeah. topical example. Lately, very uh, topical and controversial. And who, you know, too a little with the taxi drivers, but fabulous. Yeah, Airbnb, exactly. Airbnb, another. Yeah. Airbnb are featured in my books too. You know, um, what story? What story are they giving customers to tell? You know, they were a great one for finding out what the truth was in the marketplace. Is that not everybody wanted to stay in a hotel and have that sanitized kind of experience anymore and feel like it was a cookie cutter experience? So mm -hmm. they just told a different story. You know, about what it is to travel. Wanted to ask you one more question, and that. Or maybe a couple more questions. It's okay. <laughs> um, pricing. I, we didn't talk about this, but I just would love to have your reaction. There's, I've talked to uh, Tara Gentili 
uh, here in the U.S., and she's a business strategist. We had an interview about pricing because of confusion about our worth, a person's worth. You know, you heard the saying, char- I'm, now I'm going to charge what I'm worth. I want to separate that. She does too. We have, it has nothing to do with our worth. It's the yeah. exchange. And I just wondered if there's anything you want to say about that or about pricing or just about that notion of charging your worth. Well, one of the things to say is that pricing is part of your story. So if you're going to be cheapest, you're telling one story and everything has to align with that. If you're going to be if you're going to be high end, then every, you know, if you're going to be a Burberry, then every part of that story has to line up. Mm-hmm. So you can't look at pricing in isolation. That's one thing. The other thing is that I like to think of it as not as your worth, but as more as the value you can create yeah. for somebody. Yeah. And that's really tricky because, you know, I create business names and, and positioning statements and things for businesses. Well, it's really hard to quantify what the value of that amazing name is over the lifetime of a business. You have to put a price in it, obviously. You know, it's it's about value as opposed to worth. And I think, I'm not saying especially with women, but up until now, until it's quite topical with all the books, the lean-ins and the playing big with Tara Sophia. And, yeah. You know, we've had this challenge about self-worth, I guess, and tying that in, or some women have had, and tying that in with the worth, worth uh, the price we charge for our services I wanted to talk to you just had a flash high tech healthcare. Microsoft was a client. My first company that I, my first business was a boutique PR firm. And I represented my, we did a branding, um, a a naming uh, process with a consultant and the name extraordinary work group came up because I never wanted to be, feel like I led an ordinary life. Somehow that came up and I, that freaked me out, that name, because I didn't want anyone to think I was extraordinary or thought I was extraordinary. And it took me about two years to step into that. We named everybody, all my five people that worked with me loved it. So we did it. And it scared me to death. And it was like a huge stretch for me to go into it. But it was very unique and it worked. It, it was an odd name, but it worked for us. And, and I did very well with that company. I know what that's like to have, um, be willing to be seen, be willing to step into that. What do you see in terms of fears or what prevents an entrepreneur from shipping or stepping into something that might be a stretch? We get in our own way, you know, and, and often it's, you know, sometimes it's actually just because we're not ready to take that next step that it, it's going to, that's going to get us there. And we have to be ready. We have to... We have to feel the pain of not doing it and and want want it more than we don't want to we want to not do it if you like so I was talking to a friend and a client yesterday who she launched a scarf business I think probably a couple of years ago and she's been but she, she's you know the product is, has always been amazing but she's not her website what didn't reflect you know, the the value, I think, of the product, and it didn't tell the story very well. And she just sat with that for two years. We had the conversation about two years ago. And all of a sudden, she was just ready, and she decided that she, she wanted to do it. So sometimes I think we have to feel the pain of this isn't working, you know, and to and to really know that we have to push this idea out there to, you know, to bear the fruit, if you like. So. Mm-hmm. Take a risk. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. If there's no risk, there's no reward. But sometimes the fear of of the of taking the risk is enough to stop us. Yes. Until until we feel the pain too the pain too acutely, I guess. Right. Mm. That's exactly true. Well, is there anything else you want to share about your work or what's coming up? Um what I just want to say to people is um the most the thing that I think is going to create value going forward is empathy and mm. just that ability to really stand in your customer's shoes and to 
look outside of yourself almost, which is a hard thing to do when you're in business for yourself. And I, I think lots of um, your audience are, but look outside of yourself to the value you can create and the difference you can create in the world. Thank you so much, oh, Bernadette. You. And I wish you so much uh, success and continue publishing <laughs> those books. Again, it's the story of telling.com. So thank you so much. so much. Yeah. Take care. Thanks again. Thanks. Bye. Thanks a lot.